welcome to Curry King Vinny and uh, in this is one of the most important cooking lesson I'm doing because in this one I'm going to show you how to make the base sauce not just the base sauce understand about the Indian curries because whenever you have a curry the base is generally ginger garlic onion tomato and then there is spinach sometimes it's lentil sometimes it's coconut sometimes it's gram flour so sometimes it's like some thick curries we don't add any base just the spices and yogurt so there is lots of way of making a curry but majority of the curries you have in the restaurants always have onion tomato ginger and garlic chili and salt this is close to the base curry but I want you guys to try this before you start uh, you know doing the curries because it gives you an understanding about the Indian curries flavors because everyone think oh yeah the curries are made with spices no how much just changing the quantity of onion tomato it gives you such a significant difference to the curry later on so that's what we're gonna learn here so for that actually we have a plan to make three different curries but with the same ingredients so just all it varies is the portion of onion and tomato the ratio so here we're doing the butter chicken yeah for that I've taken half a bay leaf half an onion about that much size and uh, about five tomatoes this should be make enough for one person in a restaurant portion and here I have a knob of butter and about uh, seven to eight cashew nuts I'm gonna soak it in warm water for about 10 to 15 minutes yeah also what I'm gonna add is one of the key ingredients in Indian cuisine is ginger and garlic paste about teaspoon yeah so now I go to the coma if you look at it it's exactly the same only thing is I'm gonna start from bay leaf onions and I'm gonna add again the ginger and garlic paste but I add a little bit more than the butter chicken the reason is whenever you're making a really spicy curry you add more ginger and garlic whenever you're making like a korma milder curry you add more ginger and garlic because it's uh, it makes a curry very tasty you know you don't have the spices to make the curries flavorful so ginger and garlic does it yeah so again the third one is we're doing is the masala and in this one as well you can see I've got a small bay leaf and I've got one and a half onion and I've got uh, three tomatoes so even if you look at the ratio it's like 60 40 and here I'm gonna add uh, some ginger and garlic yeah so just a teaspoon of uh, ginger and garlic and if you look at it we have a similar ingredient what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just partly cook them and then blend it the reason we do that is yeah so I've taken a pan I have got about on a medium to high heat about just over a tablespoon of oil vegetable oil and to that I'm gonna add the bay leaf so this is how majority of the curries are cooked and uh, see if you are cooking about four onions if you want to do that without the blending you would have to add a lot more oil because to fry this much onion you will need a lot more oil so here with less oil we will be able to cook this onion and make this beautiful chicken coma To cook the onions faster, I'm just gonna add a pinch of salt. See what salt does is salt makes onion release the water quickly so the onions cook quicker. That's another tip you can use. And just uh, 
saute it. We don't want onions to go brown, we just want onion to soften a little bit. So why can't we blend the onion just raw? It saves up the messing, you don't have to chop them finely. We do certain curries like that, but as I said, just partly cooking the onion, it gets away the bitterness of the onion, it gives brings out the really nice sweet sweetness of the onion, you know. That's what makes the curries really nice because the, the cooked onion it makes the curries tasty. So if I just blend the raw onion, it would take a lot longer to get the bitterness out, it will still taste raw. So what we need to do is we need to get the rawness out. Whenever you be making the curry, the rawness out. You always probably you all know that whenever you have a curry next day it always says better the reason is the more you cook the better the curry taste how it works is when the so when the onions and tomato they're cooked it actually brings out the flavor of the spices when the onion and tomato are not properly cooked it overpowers the spices so you don't get to taste the hundred percent effect of the spices so that's what we are trying here and as you can see the onions is slightly sweating so it's still clear. So I just want it to soften, I don't want it to go brown. And pause. Still don't. See now the onions you know sweating and it's become clearer, transparent. We don't need to brown it because if I leave it too long it will start getting burnt and the korma will become brown. Korma should be nice and clean and white. So add the ginger and garlic paste, just uh, stir it, if you want to make the coma really rich, you can add milk to cook the rest of the onion, because otherwise if I, and now I want the onions to soften a little bit, so I'll be done that, but if I leave it too long, it will go brown, so I'm just going to add a, about one cup of water which is about like 120 ml so that way it doesn't get brown anymore but I still want the onions to cook a little bit smoother so when we blend it it becomes nice and smooth paste yeah. so to that I'm also gonna add the cashew nuts which is soaked in warm water for 10 minutes I'm gonna add that as well so this is more or less all the ingredients we're gonna use in the base sauce for the korma. See the reason I'm not adding the spices to here. See generally whenever you read a curry, a recipe for a curry, you always add the whole spices first then the onion you fry it perfect but what if you put a little bit too much spice you can't take it out but in my method of cooking what I'm showing is I'm just gonna take a the quantity of onion, tomato, whatever you need for the recipe, just take it, pre-cook it, blend it, and then we're gonna go back to the recipe again. So that way, now you can see onions are soft and transparent. I added a little bit of water, so I want the onions to be just soft enough. When you're blending, it becomes, you don't need to add extra water, and you know, it's nice and cream, smooth paste. The reason we add cashew nuts, even without adding the cream, it makes the sauce really, really soft. So here actually, for first timers, I want you to fry this. So just take a small spoon and just take a little bit of onion out of the water. Yeah, be careful, it's still hot, it's piping hot. Yeah, so you taste it. All you can taste is like partly cooked onion, with a bit of ginger and garlic. The reason I want you to do it is now I'm gonna take it to uh, take put it aside on a bowl to allow it to cool down. So when we blend we're gonna try taste it. That before without adding any cream this is gonna be taste so creamy not just the texture and the taste as well. I know like uh, I recommend not to grind the whole spices but bay leaf I do because bay leaf it's very delicate spice so it doesn't really overpower the curries. Okay now I'm gonna do the chicken masala. So I'm doing this as a second one because if you look at it 
you know um, how much onion tomato ratio is like for the korma there's no tomato 100% onion for the masala it's 60% onion 40% tomato so that way you will be able to remember how each and every one varies so I've taken a same again just over a tablespoon of uh, vegetable oil on a medium to high heat pan I'm gonna put the bay leaf in I can smell the bay leaf straight away and now I'm gonna add onion so whenever you add the onion the, the flavor of the onion cooking the smell of the onion is absolutely amazing do not try this at home unless it's somebody else cleaning again same as usual just a pinch of salt you have to remember the drill the salt helps to onion to release the water very quickly so it cooks quicker. Yeah. So whenever you know when we made a chicken masala or vegetable masala, so generally masalas always have 60% onion, 40% tomatoes. Where butter chicken is 8% tomato, 20% onion. Like that, you know, like karai has 60% tomato, 40% onion, so everything varies. That's why, you know, it's very easier to, you can change the curry just by reducing, you know, changing the onion and tomato ratio. And then all you have to do is, there are like certain spices, you know, there is, the curry is, as I said, mainly made with onion, tomato, ginger and garlic, yeah? But the spices, what defines the particular curry, and also the ratio of how much onion, tomato and everything you cook. So here, you know, also as I said earlier, so I'm just partly cooking the onion. I'm not gonna cook it thoroughly. I just want them to soften a little bit. So it helps me to, when I'm blending, it becomes nice and creamy and smooth. Again, we will not be adding any cream. Every time you do it, just try it. First time when you do it, you try it, you will not understand the cooking process of Indian curry the restaurant style and that's why you know the blending is what makes the curries taste different in restaurant I mean I'm not saying you know this is the only way of doing the curry trust me at home majority of the curries they don't use the blending certain curries but they cook for a long time they cook for longer hours and uh, how we in India like our curry. so now as you can see the onions are becoming transparent and some of the bits of onion started going brown so this is where I'm gonna add just uh, under a teaspoon of ginger and garlic paste so you always have the ginger and garlic paste before you add the tomatoes you know if you look it's like a drill you know you always onion go first and then the ginger and garlic then the tomato so that way it's always like a you know very similar method of doing the sauce so ginger and garlic doesn't need to cook for a long time and then now I'm gonna add the tomatoes a bit better earlier. Finally chopped. So here I do recommend if you're doing the two curries and both have tomatoes, use one type of tomatoes for one curry. And if the tomatoes are like slightly sour, use them for the hot curries. If you're making a hot curry, use the tomatoes which is slightly sour naturally use them for hot curry the slightly sweeter one for the milder curry so that way you know without even before you even start you have two different tastes of curry just with the onion tomato so that helps you to uh, when they have lots of curries on the tables or more than you know two or three curries they all taste different now we can see the onions and tomatoes softening I'm gonna add the, the cashew nuts which were pre-soaked in warm water for about 10 to 15 minutes so when you start chopping an onion tomato you can just soak some cashew nuts on the side the reason we soak it it becomes nice and cream creamy and smoothy it softens the cashew nut in a blender and why we add the cashew nuts see the onions are like a root vegetable tomato is a fruit when you blend it and also when you cook you will probably find that when you pour the curry sauce on top of the rice or anything you have all the, the onion tomato stays at the top, the water goes down. 
the cashew nuts act like a binding agent so it kind of blends you know mixes everything together cashew onion and tomato makes it like a creamy sauce so without even adding the cream it makes the curries really nice and creamy so as you can see all the ingredients we use to making the base sauce are very healthy like eating too much of tomato too much of onion won't make any you know yeah maybe a lot of cashew nuts so there's a lot of calorie in it but we're not using a lot of cashew nuts we're only using few cashew nuts so just uh, softening the onion so if you need you can add a little bit more water So there's also another thing, whenever you have the onions and tomato in Europe, they have a lot more moisture. So I recommend is, before you cook them, you can just squeeze them and just use the onion tomato. Save the water on the side, you can use it instead of just normal water here. Where in India, the onion tomatoes and everything, they, have, they don't have a lot of moisture. So we may have to add the water, stop them burning. So if you look at it, it's not very, it's not, you know, I need to cook this onion to a certain extent and the tomato to a certain extent. No, I just want onion to sweat a little bit, become transparent. Now we got the base for the korma ready and uh, base for the chicken masala. And again, we're going to do exactly like before, just taste a little bit. Already different, just adding tomatoes to this. Tastes completely different. but. When we blend it, we're going to taste again. That will give you why we need to blend it. So we got two ready. Now it's time for the third one. So we're going to get going. So now I've got the pan on medium to high heat. And again, the same drill, just less than one tablespoon of oil. The reason I'm adding less oil to this than the comb on the masala, because we don't have a lot of onion. So see, it always needs more oil to cook the onion so we're gonna do the same as same drill as before the bay leaf goes in and then just a half an onion so we added uh, the ginger and garlic paste and the tomatoes so try to use more than one type of tomatoes if it's available easier you know so that way you will be able to make this beautiful curry sauce without even before you add the spices you have a really tasty base sauce. So you're already halfway through there, you know? That makes it, the curries, very easy and tasty. So here, you know, there is less onion, more tomatoes. I don't need to add any water. This is what I mean, you know? So there is a lot of moisture, so I don't really need to add any more water. So the tomatoes is slightly softened. I don't need to cook it for a long time. But since it is butter chicken, if you guys like, you add a knob of butter. So that's like a tablespoon of butter. So it's like a butter tomato curry. You see now, it's already becoming smoother. See, this is what I mean. You only took about three minutes to make this base sauce where for the korma it take about six and a half seven minutes that's why the onions take a long time to cook so blending makes it shorter and here I'm gonna add the cashew nuts which are pre-soaked in warm water for 15 minutes again the quantity of the cashew nuts is slightly more in the butter chicken than the masala but the most we use in the korma so the korma generally in south of India they use coconut and korma is always considered as a royal dish that's why they use cashew nuts, pistachio, almonds so that's why the restaurants use the same you know same like a basmati rice basmati rice is always considered as luxury so when you go to the restaurant you always want to have the best if you're paying you know money so yeah so within like Three and a half, four minutes cooking. The tomatoes are softened. I'm gonna turn the heat off and the drill, same as usual. I'm gonna put it in a bowl, allow it to cool down. Just clear the pan. I'm just gonna pour just a little bit of water so get all the juice. So that also. 
we don't need to add extra water to blending. So same as usual, since you're doing the first time, just to take a little bit of the sauce. Mm. It's, it tastes like a tomato soup. I know I'm saying that, You'll everyone said the same thing, it does, it does taste like a tomato soup, but without any flavorings. So that's what I mean. So we have all three dishes so koma, chicken masala and the butter chicken. So it's already looking very red. Where the masala is looking half and half, the koma is nice and white. So we're gonna blend each one of them into really creamy, smooth paste and taste again. Before you add the spices, trust me, every one of them you think, wow, I can eat that as it is. Now I'm gonna blend it into fine, smooth paste. Again, never let anything go waste. I know I'm a cheap kid, but my mom always said, "You respect food, you never have to starve." So, always like to keep her words. Or maybe I'm scared of her. <laughs> now I'm gonna blend it. Uh, it looks like a fine, smooth paste, but if you need. It might need to add a little bit of water, but I'm quite happy with it. So you can see, I'm just gonna pour it into the same bowl again. Again, mom's words, don't waste anything. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water and then clean the jar. One done, two to go. Now we're gonna blend the second, the chicken masala. Yeah, you really don't need to clean it all because I'm just doing it because I'm doing it for a video, but it won't make significant difference. You can just rinse it and use it again. And now blend it. Once the paste is nice and smooth and creamy, you happy with the texture? You can have a look. It's nice and creamy and smooth. I'm gonna pour it into the bowl. As you remember, we have not added any coloring, anything. It's just a natural color of, of the blend of onion and tomato. So, same as usual, just add a little bit of water. Just gonna save the electricity this time. Just put back in. We're gonna blend the third and the, everyone's favorite butter chicken gravy. So just add a little bit of water, don't let it waste anything. Have a really little spoonful. You don't wanna waste, trust me, because it's gonna be that yummy. Now we blend it into really nice smooth paste. Yeah, have a look. Oh, smells gorgeous. Tomato. I'm gonna pour it into the bowl. Same as usual. Never forget mom's words. Just a little bit of water. Shake it up. So, if you remember earlier, so we got the chicken koma, chicken masala, and the butter chicken base sauce ready. We just tasted, just with the onion and everything cooked before we blend. Now we have a taste again. 
this is the most important thing in this cooking lesson because now you will be able to understand how significant difference makes it just blending is the same onion we've not cooked any further just blend it so I'm gonna try the, the coma first you can taste the hint of ginger and garlic very smooth very creamy trust me we've not added any cream and it's so creamy now we're gonna do the masala I'm gonna taste the chicken masala which is 60% onion, 40% tomato. Let's taste again. Mm. It's really, really. I know a lot of the times people think chicken masala, but I think chicken masala is one of the tastiest. It's because of the the balance is generally majority of the curries always 60-40. I think that's and I understand why, like Jal Frizi, you know the masalas and the balchis and all the curries have the same ratio now i understand because it's just perfectly balanced with a bit of zing and just the creaminess of onion touch of sweet absolutely fantastic now i'm gonna try the butter chicken one this is mm. mamma mia it's a tomato soup but it's got a very, it's got a sour and the sweetness. Because we did add butter, it's very smooth and creamy and silky. But has a really nice tangy and a touch of sweetness. Yeah. It's the sharpest of all the base sauces. 